Hey gang, and welcome back to another video here on Joe Chem. Okay gang, so I know at this point you might be sick of attacking the carbonyl, but don't worry, cyanohydrin formation is a breeze compared to what we've done before. So I think, you know, you can take a breath, kick your feet up, relax, because this won't be that bad, I promise. Okay, so if we take a look here, what you can see, just at a glance, is that we're gonna be doing an addition <clears throat> of CN. So we're gonna be adding cyanide and creating right here what you can call, you know, alone a CN is a nitrile, but in the context where you have a nitrile and an alcohol in the same carbon, it's called a cyanohydrin. So that's kind of this whole thing right here. So let me show you how this goes because unfortunately it is a little bit different than the mechanisms we've done in the past. And I have seen this drawn a few different ways. I'm gonna show you the way that I've seen most commonly. Okay, so instead of our usual protonate the carbonyl carbon first to activate this carbon, make it more reactive, the difference here is that we have cyanide, CN minus. CN minus is an excellent nucleophile, and that's why this mechanism doesn't start with protonating the carbonyl oxygen. oxygen. You can if you want to, and I've seen that mechanism done, uh, this mechanism done that way, where you use HCN, you protonate, the resulting CN minus that you get after the acid base reaction is used to attack the carbonyl carbon. However, what I've seen is what I'm about to show you most frequently. You have your nitrile, it attacks the sp2 hybridized carbonyl carbon. We know it's trigonal planar, right? We know it can attack from on top and on bottom, right? We kick up electrons like so. So after the initial attack, we form, right? We get our uh, cyanide attached, right? We get the nitrile portion of our cyanohydrin, and then we produce this O minus, this oxygen with a negative charge. So what you'll commonly see is either just HCN and CN minus, or you'll see some type of like sodium cyanide, like sodium CN and HCl. You're going to see some acid presence because what happens then is after you perform the attack, it's that acid that then performs, you know, the quenching of the negative charge, right? An acid base reaction, which then gives you your cyanohydrin. So let me just say, I have absolutely seen the mechanism drawn this way. If you're wondering why this is different than the others, I have absolutely seen the protonation of the carbonyl oxygen happen first. You then have the H, you know, the oxygen have a positive charge. You then take the resulting cyanide and attack, kick electrons up and form the product that we see above. However, I've seen this pathway that's written in the black marker much more frequently. So whichever is used in your class, go for it. Just know that I, you know, I've seen both. This is a bit more common. This is what I've seen in textbooks. Um, just wanted to throw that out there in case you, you know some of you are pondering. But what I do wanna show you is now that I've shown you the forward direction, I wanna show you the reverse. So let me clean this up. We'll click, I'll quickly show you how you can unravel your cyanohydrin to recover a carbonyl. And that does it for a cyanohydrin. So give me one second. Okay gang, to round out this video, I wanna show you the reverse formation of a cyanohydrin. How to unravel your cyanohydrin and recover a carbonyl. Now, I have not seen this question asked a lot. I've just had one-off people kind of ask me about it every once in a while. So I just wanted to include it in case you need to know it. So it's going to look very different. And again, it's gonna be different than how we've unraveled things in the previous mechanisms because there's not so much, you know, entropic considerations with needing to pump water in or remove water like we do with acetals, enamines, and imines. Here, we actually need a strong base and you're gonna see why, or just a base. So what's gonna happen first right here, you can see we have our, our, our acyanohydrin, we have lithium hydride, and then we're going to get our carbonyl, and as byproducts, you'll see we'll have hydrogen gas as well as lithium cyanide in this particular example. How this works is because we have a very wickedly strong base in H minus in lithium uh, hydride, what's gonna happen is an a very quick and favorable acid base reaction between the hydride and the hydrogen on our alcohol within the cyanohydrin. Once that happens, I think you're going to see the link, the very familiar piece that will allow us to kick off our CN, the nitrile piece of our cyanohydrin. 
now that we have this O minus, what's gonna happen is we will swing down, reform our carbon oxygen double bond, and we will, let me redraw this, that's a carbon, to C. We're going to eject the, the CN. Now remember, CN minus comes from HCN, and this is a relatively good acid. So this is weak and stable as a base, means that it's a good leaving group. So this is fine. Then when you do this, you see you can reform your carbonyl. You see this is where we form the hydrogen gas, the H2. And after the fact, we have this floating around, and we also have the lithium right here. So those two will buddy up and form lithium cyanide. Okay, gang, I hope that answered any burning questions you may have had about cyanohydrins. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.